Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number three in the SSRF module titled SSRF with Blacklist Based Input Filter. All right, let's get started. This lab has a stock check feature which fetches data from an internal system. To solve the lab, change the stock check URL to access the admin interface at http localhost slash admin and delete the user Carlos. The developer has deployed two weak anti-SSRF defenses that you will need to bypass. All right, so the vulnerable parameter or the vulnerable feature is the stock check functionality. And the goal is to change the stock check URL to access the admin interface, which is available on localhost, and then delete the user Carlos. So this is similar to previous labs. The only difference is that in this case, there are two weak anti-SSRF defenses that we will need to bypass before we can exploit the SSRF vulnerability. So let's save that, create an analysis section, and open up the lab. This might take some time. So in the meantime, we're going to open Burp Suite Professional. And the reason I'm using the professional version is just because I want to use the render feature, which is not available in the community edition. However, if you don't have the professional version, that's completely okay. You could do everything or almost everything that I do using the community edition and complete the exercise without having the professional version. All right, so we go to proxy, it's set to on. We're going to click on view details. We already know where the vulnerable feature is because it's similar to previous labs. We're going to set Foxy proxy to send requests to burp and click on check stock. All right, send this to repeater, set intercept to off, and we'll work from repeater from now on. on. Okay, so the stock API parameter contains a URL, which means that you definitely need to test it for SSRF vulnerabilities. First, let's hit send to see what a normal response is. You get the number of items that are left in stock. Next, let's URL decode this using Control Shift U and look at what's available in this parameter. So you've got a call to the stock.welike2shop.net application. It's running on 8080 and it takes in the product ID. So the first thing I'm gonna do is test if an application is available on localhost. Hit send, and we get an external stock check blocked for security reasons. So it looks like there might be an application available over here. However, there is some mechanism, likely a blacklist of certain strings or keywords that is blocking us from accessing localhost. And it's likely blocking on the string localhost, which is why it's not working. So let's try 127.0.0.1 and see if that works. Hit send and it's still blocked. So the next thing we're gonna do is try 127.1. What this will do is it'll resolve to 127.0.0.1 because it'll automatically fill the two octets that are missing. So let's hit send, see if it's blocked, and it's not. And when you click on render over here, you see that the admin panel is available. So this is nice. It worked because they're not doing a regex match on the string 127.1. Now imagine if they are, there are a couple of other ways that you could bypass this. Uh, you could use the decimal encoded version of the IP address or the octal representation of the IP address. So let's look at the decimal encoded version because most people don't know that. Let's say IP address to decimal version. And we'll try to find an application that does this online for us. So let's see this one over here. And it does. So if we click on 127.0.0.1, hit convert, and it converts it to the decimal version, which is 213070643. So we're going to copy this, put it in here, and this should work because this should resolve to 127.0.0.1. So let's paste this, hit send. And here we go. We still get the same response, which is the admin page. All right, perfect. So there's a couple of ways of bypassing blacklists, and that's why you should never use them. Instead, you should use a whitelist or what we call an allow list. All right, so we're gonna make some notes. 
localhost is available on HTTP 127.1. This one's much smaller, so I'm going to keep using it. 127.1. The next thing we need to do is see if we can access the admin panel to get the path for the admin panel. We're going to do a search for admin and it's just slash admin. So let's try that out. Hit send. And we get another message saying external stock check blocked for security reasons. All right, so we know this for sure works because it worked in the previous request. The only thing that we added is slash admin and we got blocked. So they're doing a string search on the word admin. So what we're going to do is try and URL encode some of these characters. So let's right click and go to convert selection, URL and URL encode all characters hit send and we're still being blocked so I'm going to URL encode it one more time and see if that works so convert selection URL and URL encode all characters and hit send and it works all right so what's happening over here is it's likely doing one uh, regex search using a blacklist of strings and if the string is available in this blacklist and you add it over here you get blocked and the second thing it's doing it's url decoding the variable and it's doing that before it checks the blacklist and that's why when we url encoded it for the first time it still didn't work but then when we encoded it twice it worked because it's only doing the url decoding one time all right, that looks good. So if we click on render, we should see the admin panel and we do. So we have the ability to delete the users, Carlos. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and put it in our notes. So admin interface and paste it right over here. All right, so now we want to delete the user, Carlos. We're going to find the path to delete that user and it's this one over here so slash admin slash delete and it takes in the parameter username and gives it the value carlos so we'll add that over here and we're gonna say delete carlos and we know admin's not gonna work so we're gonna need to replace it right over here with what we know works which is double url encoding it Let's paste it. This looks good. So let's copy this and attempt to delete the user. Paste it in here. Hit send. And we get a 302, which means it likely worked. So we deleted uh, the Carlos user. If we want to confirm that, we could go back to just the admin interface and see if the user was deleted. Let's render it over here. Here we go, it says user deleted successfully and you no longer can see the option to delete the Carlos user because that user does not exist in the database. All right, if we go back to the application itself, we should see the message, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by bypassing the two defenses that were put in place in order to mitigate SSRF vulnerabilities. The next thing we're gonna do is script our exploit in Python. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.